Hey everybody, and welcome to Let's Look at Dyad. Dyad is uh, newly released on Steam. Difficult to describe in traditional genre terms. I would describe this as almost like a momentum-based, rhythm-focused puzzler slash racing game, but it's a li little bit difficult to describe. Uh, you'll see it as we get involved, and I'll do my best to explain it. But this just recently came out on Steam, but it came out last spring slash summer for PSN, and it was released to uh, critical fanfare, shall we say. Maybe not on the heights of, you know, 90s, 95s on Metacritics, but uh, it was definitely in the high score, uh, or the high side of the uh, score spectrum, I should say. So it made me very interested in checking this out, and now that it's out on Steam, I am very glad that I did, uh, because I'm having a lot of fun with Diet so far, almost in like an audio surf kind of, and I use overuse this adjective a lot, but in a meditative sort of way. Uh, so why don't we start early here, and we'll try to explain what's going on with Dyad. Uh, you could have a lot of fun, you know, just for like 10 minutes playing around with these pitches here in the uh, main menu. But in any case, uh, these like 2.76 TeV, I don't know if that's teravolts or something like that, um, but let's uh, let's call it teravolts just to make this easier. Uh, but this refers to like the difficulty or just the progression in the game. So, you know, 2.76 is where we started. I, I just unlocked 4.0 and this represents about an hour and 15 minutes of play. So why don't we check out uh, one of the earlier levels here, uh, maybe Magic Circle. Graze is my- ah, let's start earlier, maybe Admirable Virtue. Yeah, you know, this is gonna give me a few minutes to actually talk about what is going on here. So there's different objectives for every single level in Dyad, or, you know, different objectives that are- different kinds of objectives, shall we say. But this is our basic, uh, kind of interface right here. We're playing as the Dyad Mobile, which I've colloquially named it for lack of a better word. Uh, and what we try to do in this game is essentially our basic, uh, mechanic is we can hook onto enemies. Uh, I'm using the A button on the Xbox 360, I have no idea what it is on PC, because as with, you know, most games, especially games that, uh, originally come out on consoles, I, I tend to use the controller, or prefer to use the controller. Uh, so, by hooking onto these enemies, essentially what we can do, and you know, they're not enemies in the traditional sense, I mean, they're not shooting at us, but they are, if we run into them, uh, later in the game, because we're still kind of at the tutorial, but if we run into them, uh, they will stop our progress. And our main goal is to finish the level as quickly as possible, or, you know, accomplish a certain objective which will be given. Now, uh, hooking onto these guys pulls us forward a little bit and gives us some momentum. There is also a secondary mechanic at work here, and this is the boost mechanic. So you can see at the bottom, uh, when I capture or hook onto an enemy, it puts one of that enemy's colors at the bottom. If we match onto two, that actually gives us a small speed boost. So this is a very early kind of glimpse into the mechanics of Dyad, but hopefully this will give you an idea for the basic gameplay. Basically, it's almost like a... Uh, an inverse version of Tempest, where instead of, uh, you know, playing as a, a, a small triangle or something that is shooting enemies that are coming up from the inside of a... Oh, I guess if we hit enemies, they still do do damage to us here. Um, or slow us down, at least. Um, yeah, instead of, like, rotating around the outside of uh, a hexagon or something, or, you know, a cylinder... A hexagonal, cylindrical tube, whatever, uh, we are rotating around the inside of it instead here. So, in doing so... Uh, this is going to allow us to um, kind of race throughout this. Again, the easiest way to kind of think of it is uh, perhaps as Audio Surf, the game that was uh, a puzzler that was, you know, color coded and allowed you to play your own music. Uh, it's kind of like that with a twist. One of those twists, obviously, that it has its own custom soundtrack, which is either a feature uh, or a detriment, I guess, depending on, on how you feel about it. The soundtrack is very uh, atmospheric. It's almost like an IDM or something, and uh, I feel like it works quite nicely. I like Audio Surf as well, and of course, that is, it, it has benefits for different reasons, like being able to kind of play your own music collection uh, while you're playing a video game at the same time, but uh, the soundtrack in, in Dyad is fantastic as well, and uh, totally original from what I've seen so far. It's not like something like Retrograde, and not shit on Retrograde, but, uh, you know, Retrograde only had like 10 songs that actually made it into the final game. This uh, certainly does not appear to be the case here. So uh, our goal on this mission is actually just to uh, get to the end as fast as possible, so we're racing through multiple sectors. I'm not very good at these uh, objective-based game modes here, but I am okay. Uh, it's some of the ones that we'll come across later. It's weird to me, uh, you know, this game has online leaderboards, and I've, I've been finding myself fairly high up, but I think that's mostly because uh, not a lot of people are playing this right now, so I'm hoping this video kind of puts the awareness out. But it is, you know, I'll admit, uh, I'm, I'm realistic, or looking at this realistically. Uh, Dyad is definitely the kind of niche game. Like, I can see a lot of people watching this video and commenting, being like, why the hell is this $15? Like, I, I can get Audio Surf a lot cheaper. It's not Audio Surf, and I, you know, hesitate to make that comparison uh, as a result. But, uh, it, uh, it ha shares similarities that are really only there from, or I'm only using them from, like, a, uh, a categorical standpoint, so I can describe the game much more easily. So, uh, I got two stars on this level, which is not fantastic. I'm ranked 270, that's not very good, but I am ranked in like the 40s on uh, some of the later levels. So th that's just a very quick uh, rundown of how things work in um, 
dyad for some levels. Why don't we move on to something like uh, Magic Circle? This is going to be a pretty easy level, I think. I've got three stars on this already. Uh, and the way that this works, uh, as I will explain when I get in, uh, the game is very good about kind of uh, adding mechanics modularly. I don't know if that's actually a real word, but, you know, throughout the game, the game will become more complex. So uh, it keeps your interest because things are constantly changing. But what we do here is we still have the boost. Uh, we still have to know the fact that if we touch enemies, they will... Uh, knock us backwards and stop our momentum. And remember, I did describe this as a momentum-based puzzler or racing game. Uh, but what they introduce here is the graze mechanic. So what you want to do is not hit enemies, but you are rewarded for coming close to them. So you'll see when I hook one, like so, uh, a circle kind of emanates out from them. If we pass through that circle, that fills up our lance meter, which you can see down there. There's two of them, actually, in the bottom left and... or bottom center left and bottom center right. Uh, and by grazing these enemies uh, th and filling up this lance meter, that allows us to uh, do a special move that we won't see yet, but we will see it on the next level. And I'll probably do like one more tutorial level to explain like what the lance is, because that's the last major mechanic I think I've been introduced to. Uh, and then we'll move on. One thing I haven't talked about, and I would be remiss if I didn't at least mention it at all, is I feel like the strongest part of Dyad is definitely this like unified kind of aesthetic that it's got going on. It looks fantastic, it sounds fantastic, and it sounds like it looks, and it looks like it sounds, if that makes sense. It just gives you kind of a feel of a, um, you know, a very realized vision, shall we say. So this this is the level that introduces Heroes of the Lance to us. So what we want to do here is, um, with our lances being ready, we can hit the X button on the Xbox 360 controller, and what that will allow me to do is actually just kind of speed through enemies, and as we speed through enemies, uh, we will capture them, and that will continue to refill our energy, but also allow us to speed up greatly. And again, uh, the way we get this lance is by uh, filling up that lance meter, which is done by grazing enemies. Now, I don't want to say the word lance too much, because I already feel like it's losing its meaning, but the, the cool thing about Dyad, at least as you progress, is that you know, things are constantly changing, so, you know, your strategy that worked on the last level, uh, it will continue to work on later levels, but you also- ah, oh, that's real bad of me. Uh, but you also have to kind of meld that uh, with the number of mechanics that you, you're learning as time goes on. That was a really bad way to explain this. What I'm saying is the game grows in complexity at a, a fairly constant rate, at least so far. Again, I've been playing for like an hour or so, and it just keeps adding complexity on top. And this is actually really good, because it keeps your interest I think if they just went with one basic mechanic, again, I'm comparing this a, a little bit to Retrograde, not to shit on Retrograde, but to, you know, compare and contrast a little bit. Uh, and, and I really feel like this is a, a substantially more engaging experience than Retrograde, because, you know, Retrograde had a, an interesting hook, and then it sort of got stale after a while, because it didn't really uh, innovate on that hook after it explained, you know, the fact that it existed and what it was. Uh, whereas, so far, Dyad continues to get... Uh, more and more complex the more I play it. And it's just a, it's a pleasant experience. This is, it's a buzzword almost in my videos at this point to say that a game is, is a, a fun world to inhabit or, you know, it's got a good atmosphere to it. But at the same time, I really do believe that this is true. This is a game I just, you know, I, I'm engaged when I play it and, and it's a very positive thing to say about any game. That was probably the best I've done at any single level in Dyad so far. Uh, we needed to get 18 to get, or 18 lances to get um, 3 stars and we got 45, so we are ranked 19th on the leaderboard. Maybe we can find like Total Biscuit or something there. Bibimbap is uh, number one. What a delicious Korean food. And I am just past the uh, first space here, so sadly that's not going to work for me. But in any case, uh, sure, that is a pretty good example or a pretty good, um, shall I say, uh, conceptual demonstration of uh, what makes Dyad Dyad. And why don't we check out some of the later levels now so you can see that shit gets real crazy as you get further and further along. Um, I'm trying to find a level. There was one level in here I actually did not like very much. I think it was this one, actually. Observations in the on the beautiful and the sublime I did not really like. Why don't we check out Expansion? This is a really good example of how, uh, again, the complexity keeps being added in the game. The other game this kind of reminds me of is like a, a Rock Band Blitz, or perhaps more accurately, but also more obtusely, because this might not be nearly as popular, but... Uh, Frequency and Audacity, the harmonics games through PlayStation 2. Uh, it, it's not exactly the same, but it has a, a similar kind of interface and the mechanic of how you kind of like move along a note track is a little bit similar. But in, in any case, I should explain what's going on here. Basically, the way that this level works is they're introducing this idea of a zip line. Uh, so if you connect two similarly colored enemies uh, together, they will create a zip line. And if you ride that zip line, you go faster than normal. Again, uh, there's some levels, uh, most of these have just been, or most of the ones I've shown off, at least, have just been kind of tutorializations, which is not really indicative of, of Diet as a whole. The structure is a little bit different. Um, you know, there's levels where it's like race to the end as fast as you can. There's levels where it's survive as long as you can, and you'll have like a limited number of lives. Every time you get hit, you'll lose a life. Uh, there's levels where almost like you have, again, for lack of a better word, like a hunger meter. 
Uh, and, you know, as you eat enemies, you get less hungry, but as you stop eating enemies, you get more hungry. And again, it's just basically get as far as you can without starving to death. Uh, and again, this, this structure keeps things super varied in Diana and makes her an interesting experience. You might not be super engaged by what you're seeing right now. Again, I, I would like to point out uh, that I, I'm not totally naive. I know that this is going to be a, uh, a niche title that doesn't necessarily interest everybody out there. Uh, but if you like what you see, I'd encourage you to check it out, because this is not necessarily an experience of, uh, or a, a case where what you see is what you get. This is much more of a case of where, you know, I'm going to show off five or six levels, but almost in like an Adventures of Shuggy kind of way. Every level so far is at least a little bit different from levels that precede it in a non-superficial way, which is uh, some heady praise I think I could lump on. Whether or not you, uh, you know, admire the base characteristics or the, the basic gameplay of, of Dyad is uh, another thing altogether, but if you do, uh, there is enough variety variety here to keep it going despite the fact that it might look like they're all you know only superficially different that's not necessarily the case uh, I, I think the structure of this game is set up really well it, it took a while to get me going on me like when I when they first were introducing like the most basic mechanics I was like ah you know like it seems okay uh, but as the, the complexity grew more and more and more I found myself becoming more and more engaged with the game sadly I was one away uh, from being 25 there, but uh, I should be on the first page of the scoreboard here. Oh my god, are you telling me there's actually only 15 people, or does that guy's name just not have a, uh, any characters associated with it? Um, we, we haven't shown off nearly as much as I want to show off a Dyad, but we probably will not be able to do that at all. So why don't we uh, just check out uh, a couple more levels, and then maybe we'll call it quits. Race both sectors as fast as possible. We might as well do this, because this will explain uh, or another kind of trope or another kind of... Uh, category for a level that uh, shows up quite frequently in Dyad, which is, again, race to the finish. It's not my favorite, but uh, this is kind of one of the first unified levels I'm going to be showing off where, you know, it it's not just one characteristic that we're going to be focusing on. There's going to be a lot of characteristics that we're focusing on, or a lot of mechanics that we're focusing on, I should say. So this one, we we've got to unify kind of our uh, understanding of the game so far in order to finish the level as fast as possible. So we're going to be trying to hit zip lines uh, as often as possible. Uh, we're also going to be trying to connect the same colored uh, enemies, not just to create zip lines, but also to uh, give us uh, an innate boost. And then, of course, we're going to be trying to graze enemies as often as possible uh, so that we can get uh, our lances set up. And then our lances will, again, allow us to travel super fast. By the way, as we eat more enemies, the, the lance continues to grow. So it's not like it has a set length. Uh, in fact, there are actually extenders. Oh, that sucks. Uh, there are actually extenders uh, that you'll find as well. They grow your lance six inches in two days or less. Uh, but... We'll come across those at some point, I'm sure. So this is just a, a multi-stage level. Uh, I really like the game does a, a good job of explaining like how well you're doing at any given time. So at the end of like half a section, you get a graph like this and you can see like, oh, so I sucked pretty bad, but uh, at the same time, no, there's no uh, compensation for that. I sucked really bad. Average checkpoint time, 10.16 seconds. That's like one second and a little bit slower than I would have needed to get two stars, which is, of course, not even close to three stars. So, uh, again, those like tutorial levels that you saw might have looked like the game is uh, very simplistic. That's not necessarily the case. This might be a situation where things are, uh, you know, easy to play, hard to master. Or it might be a situation where I'm just bad. Again, uh, these are first impressions videos. Take them with a grain of salt. I have not played through the entire game. But I will say for 15 bucks, I would definitely recommend Dyad if you like what you see. I'm having a really good time with it so far. Uh, it, it was my go-to, uh, you know, playing the game with a cup of coffee for the, the last morning or so. Just like sit down, pour a cup of coffee. you got a half hour until it cools down. Why not play some Dyad uh, and enjoy yourself and listen to some cool music? I like that it's not licensed music as well. Like, uh, I appreciate licensed music. Uh, you know, I, I played Symphony last year. I thought Symphony was okay. I had no major problems with it. Uh, but at the same time, it's nice to hear an original soundtrack now and then. Like, music that I believe, don't quote me on this, but I believe was made for the game. Uh, again, I might totally eat my words if it turns out that this is, like, disaster piece or something like that. But uh, as far as I know, this is an original soundtrack. It's original to me, anyway. So let's continue onwards here. We are still in the one-star territory because I'm really bad at video games. You know, it, you might be getting a little psychedelic here. You might be getting a little bit of motion sickness. These are the kind of games that usually do give me motion sickness. Diet hasn't really given me too much motion sickness so far. It's certainly not to an intolerable point. Uh, something like Quantum Conundrum or, you know, Portal gives me way, way, way more motion sickness than this despite me spinning around constantly here. So this uh, was not a very good time for me. But as you can, I'm ranked one on this level, apparently, unless Steam just went down. Uh, Steam must have gone down there, because I can't possibly have beaten Bebenbop there. Uh, I think. Total time, 224. Yeah, I would be on, like, the second page here. Uh, but in any case, let's continue onwards, and maybe we'll do one more level. I mean, there's not much more 
to show off in Dyad uh, that it, it can't be showed off by something other than iteration, if that makes sense. Like, I could sit here and play, you know, like, all of these levels, and you'd get more of a feel, but it, it's just, it's going to change proportionally, shall we say. Um, match sprints? Maybe this is another good one. It's going to be fairly short. So, uh, this is a level that introduces the Lance Extender. So, what we want to do here, obviously, we want to, you know, we can Lance, we can set up combos and stuff like that, but there's also green sections, uh, and these green sections will allow us to uh, extend our lance, if you will. So every time we hit one of those, it will allow us to extend a little bit further. I, I, you can't extend it ad infinitum, as far as I can tell. Again, I, I'm probably pretty bad at the game overall, but uh, that being said, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that would be some kind of exploit, or it would be awesome. This is very much, it's the kind of game, again, I guess like Audio Surf, that you could choose to play uh, as a, a score attacking type joint if you wanted to, but uh, I, I've just been playing it as kind of a, an atmospheric, uh, like a cool aesthetic, basically. So we do have our lance charged up. Let's try to eat this. Uh, the, the premise of this level is obviously um, yeah, get our lance 100 enemies as fast as possible. I think I did fairly well on this one on my, uh, my first try, so I'm hoping that I'll be able to uh, improve on that score because uh, it's a game where, you know, obviously you're, you're trying to constantly improve. I haven't really gotten stuck on levels. I have failed a couple. There's, there's some levels with failure conditions. I don't know if all levels have failure conditions, but I've definitely failed a... a once or twice, uh, but at the same time, uh, I don't know if I'd necessarily say it's, it's difficult in the traditional way of, you know, like trial and error. It's more so uh, it's difficult in trying to get high scores. Again, nothing wrong with that. Uh, different strokes for different folks. So I'm just going to keep trying to charge up my shit here. I am running into a staggering amount of enemies, but at the same time, I'm still in three-star territory. Game, I think, does a pretty good job of explaining uh, how you're doing at any given moment. Uh, again, it, is, it does have kind of racing elements, so uh, sometimes you'll get things that resemble a split time, which is really interesting to see in a, a game like this, and I think it's, it's well presented. From an interface standpoint, uh, I have basically no complaints at all. I, you know, normally I complain about these games having some kind of visual incoherence, uh, again, retrograde to bring it up. I, I thought everything kind of blended together and made it difficult to, to see what was going on. This, I, I kind of feel like that's the design of this game, and to a certain extent, it actually enhances the experience here uh, because it makes it look more trippy and hallucin hallucinogenic, which is kind of the goal. I mean, if, if you're playing this game, uh, you have to understand that that is going to be an element of it, uh, for better or for worse, and, and you know that is something that will probably vary depending on uh, which person you're talking to. So I'm not doing very well here. It looks like I'm probably going to get two stars if I'm lucky. Uh, we're at 72, and again, at, th at this point, I'm kind of button mashing. It's weird to play a game like this and talk about button mashing, but you absolutely can button mash. Whether or not you succeed with that, I guess, <laughs> is a, a matter of luck, but, um, I have been able to button mash here. So if you don't know what's going on, uh, never fear, because we are in, uh, essentially the same boat. Just trying to, m it's easy to button mash on a level like this, because, uh, every single enemy is the same color, so it it's very easy to get kind of boosts going. But I'm doing a really shitty job of actually lancing enemies. I might actually get one star here, which would be pretty embarrassing. Uh, I don't know if I got like four enemies there. Uh, if I can get the Lance Extender, that might do a little bit better for us. I th I'm only getting like four enemies per Lance, which is I think way worse than I did last time. So ignore everything I said about doing better this time. What I should really be doing is just trying to line them up, and then once I get in a good line, I can probably get like 10 per lance. So I, do, I will have my lance built up after this. Yeah, we're down to one star. There we go. That allowed me to get at least uh, three or four. Uh, three or four extra, I mean, on top of the ones that I got before. All right, so that might be enough. No, it turns out I'm still bad at video games, so we are going to finish here any second now. Uh, this is substantially worse than I did last time. Again, our goal here is to get uh, 500, or sorry, 100 lances. 500 would take me probably half an hour at this point. Uh, but with three more, we will be good to go. And I am digging this track, so it doesn't matter. Did I really just not get that last one there? Uh, well, in any case, we have slowed down. You can, like, it's momentum-based, like I said, so you can almost stop in certain situations, and that might be a failure condition for some levels, if I had to guess. But in any case, this is Dyad. This is a right square bracket, left square bracket production. Uh, I don't know if they've actually produced anything else, but they are Canadian, so you know. Hometown Northern Pride represent our true North strong and free. Uh, there are some other things in this game that I haven't really talked about at all, because I haven't really checked on them at all. Uh, but for example, there is, if I go to like level one here, there is a trophy mode, uh, which I guess allows us to... I don't know if this is like a, a, a vestige of being on PSN or something like that. Hook 22 pairs of enemies while pressing the hook button a maximum of 50 times. So I guess this is like almost a puzzle mode that gives us uh, some weird kind of conditions. So I'm, I'm pretty confident that I can get this done. Basically, this is just like have uh, 
like not awful accuracy. Oh no, wait, 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 I have to hook pairs. Okay, let's retry. So I took 22 pairs with only pressing the button 50 times. So that's actually harder because that means I have to hit 44 enemies uh, without messing up more than six times, which is not necessarily difficult because you can, you know, see your crosshair. Uh, but at the same time, it, it uh, this is kind of neat. This adds a little bit of variety that I, you know, previously did not even know existed in the game. So I don't know if there's a, a scoreboard based on time here. If I had to guess, I would say there probably was. That would add... Uh, a certain other element of difficulty into it. Let's see if we can do this. It shouldn't take too long. Uh, and then, oh, missed it. And then there's a, uh, missed it again. Then there's a remix mode. And I actually don't know what the remix mode is. I assume, you know, it, maybe it's like Mario Kart 64 where you do the levels in reverse or something. We'll see though. So just don't fuck it up too bad and I should be okay. Game's getting real trippy. Kind of like I got pancake batter all over my glasses. Yeah, pancake batter. They'll believe that one. So we're up to 15 out of 22, so this level's pretty easy, but you know, oh, like the rest of the game, I'm assuming that um, it gets harder and harder as you go along. Now, I only have 11 presses left, and I have to get four pairs, which shouldn't be too bad, but it's becoming more visually difficult to- Oh, I didn't- the level just ended! Alright, so maybe that is way harder than I expected, but I'm not going to do that uh, too many times. But it's neat that that uh, mode kind of exists in the game, and I'm guessing that Remix... Oh, it just allows you to change uh, some certain characteristics within the game. But in any case, this is Dyad. There will be a link in the video description to pick this up on the Steam store page if you are interested. Uh, I have very positive impressions of Dyad so far. I'm glad it finally made its way to, way to the PC. I hope these guys do well, because I think this is, uh, if nothing else, a very unique game. It's certainly not for everybody, but if you're the kind of person who's into these kind of rhythmic and visually uh, striking games, shall we say... Uh, then I think Dyad is the best one that I've played recently. Certainly, I think this is a lot better than Retrograde. Uh, you know, it, it's probably the best rhythm game, or, and it's not necessarily a rhythm-focused game, but it's the best rhythm game I've played in a little while, uh, at least within the past year. And I, yeah, if you're interested, I strongly encourage you to pick it up. In any case, as always, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.